Hi, I'm Michelle Kempema with the Colorado Model Railroad Museum, and October What's Neat starts right now. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. This is What's Neat for October 2018. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a great show. This month we go to Kansas City to the NMRA Nationals. We interview four modular layouts and talk to 11 manufacturers, distributors, importers, and museums, including a great interview with Tony Kester, that very respected publisher that we all know that's been in the model press for over 50 years. Plus, we also take a look at the, the Colorado Model Railroad Museum with Michelle Kempema, and she explains to us what a great place that is with a 5,000 square foot layout, which is perfect for planning your vacation when you go to Colorado. And if you do that, be sure to go to my favorite train store in Colorado, Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado. Thank you very much for sponsoring the What's Neat show. And if you need your Model Railroad products right away, you can order them right after this show at mycaboose.com. With over 142,000 products on their internet website, it's a magnificent place to check out. So Kansas City was a beautiful, beautiful city by day. From my view in the hotel room, the trains look just like model railroad models running through the center of the city. You could see that beautiful Western Auto Building that Chuck Hitchcock built and put on his famous Santa Fe layout that we're all familiar with. And at nighttime, this beautiful building had a neon sign on it, that gorgeous Western Auto sign that just lit up and complemented the entire Kansas City skyline. The show was very well organized and very well put on this year, so enjoy these interviews and all this wonderful content in about 52 minutes for this month's October What's Neat. I'm standing here with Dusty McCoy here at this beautiful Fremo layout, an absolutely awesome Dusty. This thing is huge. How many modules do you have here? We have 61 modules here. And not only do you have 61 modules, but this is a very well thought out layout. The scenery is absolutely prototype, would you say? Yes, very much so. And that's one of the things that we really gear towards in Fremo is achieving a higher level of realism with our, with our not only way we operate, but with our scenery as well. I am so impressed with the size. You said there were 60, over 60, Six, how many? 61 modules. 61 modules. 61 and modules. what is that trains like, do you think, in track? Five, 600 feet of track? Uh, I think we've got about 500 feet of track. All right, yeah. and now it takes a great uh, system to run a layout like this. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of system do you use? We use the Di 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 Digitrax DCC system. Digitrax, so uh -huh. Digitrax system, that's a pretty good system for a very big layout like this. Yes. Do you guys have signals? Uh, we do have signals. And who do you like to use for that? We use the M M MSS uh, signal system. Okay, it's beautiful. Yeah. I love looking at these signals as they trains, yeah. when the chains go Pretty by. Cool. Now you've got this bridge here. This bridge uh -huh. has got to be better than 40 feet long, and this is a prototype? Yes, this is modeled after, and this is by Andy, our gentleman sitting over here, and okay. this is modeled after the uh, Lackawanna Railroad, uh, Nicholson Viaduct in Nicholson, Pennsylvania. I remember photographs of that. Now, Andy walking over here, you're the artist that built this bridge. How many hours, Andy, have you got in this model? How many years? Three. You have three years. Three years. Wow. And it's made out of? Quarter inch MDF and pink Owens Corning Foam, insula uh, foam insulation. Do you set this up in your layout at home? No, the idea is to take it portable. Okay. With the Fremo setups. How many sections does this come apart in? Every pair of arches is a section, so there's five sections. And then you got. The you are absolutely to be commended. This is amazing. This I can't get my head around this bridge. It is absolutely prototypical. And you know, we're always trying selective compression. You didn't do that here. No, I, I was going to only do maybe a couple of pair of arches, but when it was, became so readily recognizable on Facebook and the comments, I said, I got to do the whole thing. 
Andy, that's awesome. Now tell me, Dusty, uh -huh. how many uh, model groups are represented in this layout setup? Um, well, individuals, we have two main or three major model groups here. One is Missouri Valley Fremo um, out of Omaha, Nebraska. Two is Southern Kansas Fremo out of Kansas. Nice. And three is uh, um, Southern uh, California Fremo. And uh, and then we have just several individuals that came and brought modules. We've uh, we've got modules from California, from Colorado, Utah, nice. Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, um, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Illinois. God, this is the best hobby in the world. I keep saying that. Now I want to talk about how long did it take you to set this up. Um, Last two days, we put in about 22 hours setting up this railroad. And you've been planning this for months. We've been planning this for two years. Two years. Uh, when we found out that NTS was going to be in Kansas City this year, um, we really started planning about four years ago talking about this, but have really been in active planning the last two years. And um, we... Um, we have our Lucas Seiler, our layout planner, he, he spent over 150 hours designing the railroad. When That's we would amazing. have, you know, for other reasons, people couldn't attend and come, and it was really kind of fluid up until the last two days. And uh, But a lot of guys that worked really, really, really hard to make this happen, our, our DCC um, group, that worked out and, and uh, putting the putting down all of we had 12 12 blocks on this railroad wow and uh, they did a fantastic job getting this railroad up and going but um, a lot of people a lot of work came together and a lot of experience from shows to to make this railroad happen and um, you know one of the things that we did a little differently is we really tried to put some structure in this time we're using a dispatcher um, for the railroad and really had some standard operating rules on length of trains and to make everything fit in sidings and flow like a real railroad. How long of a train can you run on this with your rules this weekend? Um, we can get up to probably about a 50 car train. Okay, well that's still reasonable. After you yeah. get three or four engines, you're at your max on pull. Now the last thing I wanted to say, uh -huh. I know this is built at Fremo standards. You've got yeah. a standard bench height of about 50? 50, 50, 50 inches. So yeah, if other people build rail. Fremo layout modules, they would fit with this layout, wouldn't yes, they? Yes, they would. So is why we can get guys from California and guys from Kansas and we can come together set everything up and if we build it to standard and build it right that it all operates like it should. And Could great. I convince you guys to set this up at St. Louis at the 2020 National? Uh, we're already or the thinking 20, about it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's two years away. Yeah, just two years away. We're already thinking about the it. The red carpet's out for you guys. This is a magnificent layout, well, and I really much. appreciate you sharing it with the uh, viewers on our What's Neat show. All right. Well, thank so you very thanks, much. Thanks, Dusty. Appreciate it, Ken. You have a great day. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Great. Appreciate you having us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joshua Barton with What's Neat This Week, and we're here at the 2018 convention and I'm here with James Wright. Hi James, how are you? Hey Josh, how's it going? I'm going pretty good. You any barbecue in your pocket? Uh, hold no. on, let me check. <laughs> no, no, I forgot in, in St. Louis. Oh no, okay. <laughs> we'll have to settle for KC barbecue. That's right. I don't know if I'm down with that though. Yeah? Sorry everybody in KC. So what's going on? What you, how's the show? Well, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's overload. Yeah, it is. First, It's my first national convention and I don't know which way to go next. Yeah, I suggest a methodical back and forth motion to cover everything. That's that's a good strategy. Yeah. Hey, this is James Wright and Josh Barton and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. I'm standing here with Joe Fugate from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, that internet magazine that is absolutely the most well-known internet magazine for model railroading so far that's out there. You've got some fantastic numbers, you've got years of experience, Joe, and we love what you do. But you know what, I also know you've got a passion for trains because it's all around us. Yeah. This is your Toma layout that you brought to Kansas City. You showed us pictures on the podcast about three weeks ago and it was stilts. How did this get built so quick, Joe? Well, just a lot of hard work, but uh, you know, like you say, passion, right? It's uh, just uh, had that dream in mind of where I was going and just keep working till I, till I get there. And uh, you know, reality is this is, this is uh, uses Toma thinking. And I also pushed the envelope on some techniques. And so I was thinking going into this, there are some things that are gonna work, some things that aren't. And so I do have some things that didn't work and so I'm going to take what I learned and go back to Portland and uh, build version two. Now isn't the NMRA show closer to your neck of the woods next year? Yes, it's in Salt Lake. So instead of four days driving, it's two days, so. Okay, well I look forward to maybe coming out there and hanging out with you. And I see you're using this new proto throttle on the layout. Did I get oh, the name of this right? Yes, that's a hoot. Do you like this? Oh, it's a hoot. It, 
to me, it totally transforms how you operate. You know, years ago, I used, got to play with the True Action Throttle. Remember Lynn Westcott and the True Action Throttle? Anybody that's been in the hobby for years will remember that. And then, you know, I played with sound lo locomotives over the years, and sound's an interesting novelty, but what this does is this takes the tactile feel coupled with sound, the modern sound locomotives that have braking, and uh, takes that whole transistor throttle with momentum thing, puts it all together in one package, and now all of a sudden when I'm uh, throttling up and I can hear the, the loco throttle up before it starts moving, I can see that it's received my what I'm trying to do, or when I'm braking and I hear that brake squeal when it comes to a stop, all of a sudden now everything's come together. The sound is is responding to what I'm doing and it's great. So you like it, how many are you gonna get? Uh, gee, I don't know. Have you I'll have thought to... about that? Do you need one for a layout or do you need more than one of these to run? Well, it depends on what my guys think. I need to try it, my operators out on it. You know, if they like it, I'm gonna have to get more than one, yeah. That's cool. Joe, we love you coming here to Kansas City. The booth looks great. Everything you've done for this hobby with the magazine, thank you so much. And your layout that you got done this week, rock and roll, you actually are a model railroader. Good job. That's right. Thanks, Joe. You bet, Ken, thank you. Okay, I'm Kevin. And I'm Elizabeth. And you're watching What's Neat with Ken, Ken Patterson. Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> For this segment of What's Neat, I am standing with two of my most favorite people in the industry, Stacy Wathers, or otherwise known as Stacy Naffa Wathers, and of course, her father, Phil Wathers. We all know Phil. Now, Phil, hey. we know that you'd rather be flying planes while she's holding down the fort there at home, but between the two of you, you guys have really done something for our industry. It's It can't even be calculated what you've done with regards to train sets, making the hobby easier to understand for the new people. It's just, it's a very methodical process that you all have mastered. But beyond working all the time, I know that both of you have a bit of a passion for the hobby. Tell me about y'all's passion for trains. Well, let me let me start because I I was born first, okay? <laughs> All right. So my passion for trains has been to be able to bring products to people that they really enjoy. If you take a look right now at all the like the cornerstone kits that we have, there's so many things that you can do with that. So many, uh, literally, uh, almost anything that you want to create, you can create there. Then you've got all of our the, the locomotives, the freight cars. We're getting into the scenery products now. We've got the accessories. We've got our new electronics. We've got all these products. Uh, so we've got everything that you need to make. And so my joy comes from having taken that uh, kind of a maybe a narrow band of products and just enlarged it so that we would have all this product. And I have to be honest with you. I didn't do it. I, I mean, I know it's this, a family company. I know this comes as a big shock. I didn't do it. That's we've it got mean. we've got some That's really it. great product development people back in Milwaukee. Very creative, very knowledgeable, very tuned in to what the modelers want, and they are constantly coming up with stuff. The reason I come to these shows though is so I can see what we're making, because <laughs> they never tell me about this stuff. And then when I get to the show, it's like, whoa, this is so cool. That is so cool. God, Stacy, how cool is it to work with Dad every day? It's it's really great. Actually, that's be. that's kind of my that is my passion to to come back to the business. Actually, kind of came in two generations of our family. My son was crazy about trains when he was four years old, and um, at the same time, I was thinking about what I wanted to do with my career. And the opportunity to work with my dad was really really special. And around that time, my grandfather actually was ill, and we were turning 75 as a business. And he gave a nice little video speech, and he talked about the greatest honor in his life was to work with his father and with his son. And so at that moment, a little light bulb went off when I had a kid who was crazy about trains, and I just thought, I have to, I have to do this. I have to keep promoting such a creative, great hobby, and to be able to work with my dad has been like the ultimate privilege. So I feel like a really, really lucky human to be able to have done that, wow. and then to do it in an industry which is so constructive and productive and where people connect with one another it is like a big family like the people who you meet in the hobby I think that's what I love I love people connecting with people over things that are meaningful and I think that our hobby is meaningful it's 
really, really a productive use of free time. Wow, Dad, she's awesome. Is she good? I know. <laughs> and you got to remember, like you said, it's a family company. You've got the process down. Every time you two go to work, you're among all your friends and family, and you've got over a hundred of them, don't you now? Yeah, we've got a good a good we've got staff a great back. Team. Yeah. So great a lot of people to run Wathers, one of the yeah, most. Yeah, we do not do it alone. Not even close. We, they just all make us look. They make us look good. <laughs> That's awesome. I want to thank the both of you for sharing yourselves with the viewers of What's Neat, because this is the best hobby in the world, and it's made of great people just like this. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Hi, Mom. <laughs>
that's the beauty of the hobby and I've heard it over and over again. It's not about your modeling skills, even though they're fantastic, it's about the relationships. That is, and that's what the National NMRA is all about. I love this hobby, it's the best hobby in the world. I agree, yeah. John, this is an awesome layout. I appreciate you sharing this with the modelers of What's Neat. Hi, my name's Dale Shipman. You're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm with Tom Flores from Train Tracks here at the NMRA National in Kansas City. And Tom, you've got a product that a lot of shoplifters are very familiar with, mm -hmm. and that is this RFID technology. Not to keep track of merchandise, but to keep track of your trains on your layout. Tell us about this cool product. Well, if you're familiar with um, the AEI we use on train cars, as you see in the cars, and what it does in the real life, it picks up the car and tells you exactly what it is. It has all the contents of it, where it's going and where it's coming from. Right. So what we're doing in this, we actually scale it down to this little tag right here. Okay. And basically the way this works is like the, in, in real life. The train will go over uh, a said reader at the industry. It will tell it what to do if you want to go ahead to fill it up or if you want to go ahead and take out the contents of it. So it'll go ahead and pick up a drop off. The next cool thing about it is uh, what this thing does us too is it's a tracking system for your uh, for your car. So you know exactly where this thing is on your layout at any given time. So if I put one of those in one of my trains, I can tell where my train's running on my layout. Not only that, we also have dispatch capability. And if I wanted to uh, dispatch your trains from your house, I can do it from my house down in San Antonio, Texas. This is fantastic. And then what's the uh, price point to get into a system like this? The price point, we have the, um, the smaller one here. And this is um, our uh, a three pack. And this one just goes for uh, $179.99. Okay, and there's three readers in here? There's three readers. We have uh, 25 tags in here. Uh, we also have a Raspberry Pi, which communicates with it. And Raspberry, there's a whole other uh, litany of stuff you can look now at. Now the tags are what I put on my freight train. So I yes. got 25 tags for freight cars, three readers to read around the layout, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty good deal. And this is going to work with DCC systems. Absolutely. So Digitrax, NCE, the whole bit. Everybody, you can even work for uh, for uh, analog if you want to go that route. This is fascinating, Tom. A lot of people have talked about this on the internet. It's the first time to actually see it in person. Tell me what website do they need to check out to look at this? You come to uh, www.traintracks.com com and we have all our pricing put on there if you want to find out more information and how this thing works we'll be more happy to do that for you guys that's awesome this is exciting thank you tom thank you mr patterson thank you i'm standing with one of the most respected published model railroaders in the industry and I mean that with sincerity and love, Tony Kester. I've been following your work my entire life, and I'm honored to have you talk with the viewers of the What's Neat show. We already all know you, we respect you, but brother, tell me about this wonderful passion you still have for trains. You know, that's one of the hardest things to explain because if we could really figure that out, we could sell it. You know, we could walk up to anybody on the street and give them an A, B, C, D, E case, and they go, I get it, trains. And it's just not that easy. Somehow, as a toddler, you know, run to the window to see a train. Um, the only thing I've seen like that is my grandson, one of my grandsons, um, from the time he was a toddler, um, he just got it. You know, grandpa's trains, and now he's a college uh, junior long snapper for University of Rhode Island football team uh, back up I guess and uh, he just gets trains I mean he just he gets it so I wish I wish I could explain what the magic is I think that's the juice as you've brought somebody young you've inspired them would you say well I, th I think what I did inspire them but I don't think I personally did in the sense that if it wasn't there if, in other words I didn't have a basement full of railroad um, it wouldn't have triggered something. But fortunately, he was born while the Allegheny Midland still exists, which means December of 99, I think we took it down. I'm, I've never been quite sure whether it was there or 2000, but right around the turn of the century. And he saw that. And I have pictures of him and his mom holding him up. And something triggered right at that point in time. And man, if we could just figure out how to distill and sell that, we could double this hobby overnight. 
You're awesome. Tony, I want you to know I've stolen a line out of one of your videos, and one time you said in a video, this is the best hobby in the world, and I use it every week on the show. It comes from you because you said it on one of your videos, and it's the truth, right? Well, I have horrible news for you. It's copyrighted, and my lawyers will be in touch shortly. That's okay. You got cornfield <laughs> pictures in one of your books, and we never, but that's another story. So I love that's you. Right. I respect I, you. I know. Don't worry about that. It's, was, all, it's on me, brother. Your, I was modeling your cornfields there for a while. It's the, all good. The, uh, we share. Grass we both the promote the hobby. I know we're into promoting ourselves to a degree because there is a little bit of, uh, you know, something at the end of that rainbow, but it's really about promoting the hobby. And we both, if nothing else, I'm trying to do it like you did it. Well, I, I honestly don't know how I did it or how I am doing it, but um, I think when you really enjoy something, uh, people pick up on that. Yes. And uh, I think if you don't really enjoy it and you're just doing it for a living, I think they also pick up on that. Right. If you clock and, out at five o'clock and you have no passion. Yeah, you you can see that, I and that's okay. It's, it's I mean, here. we need worker bees too, but <laughs> but uh, I'm not. Uh, I, I can't clock out at five o'clock, no. as my wife will cheerfully tell you that. Uh, but uh, then again, if if we're sitting down watching TV and I sort of reach over for the remote, she'll say, don't you have something to do in the basement? Amen. <laughs> so she even likes model already. Tony, you're the best. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes with me. I love you. Ken, it's great to see you again. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, I'm standing by a Lego layout, which to us HO scalers and O-Gage guys, it's a little foreign and it seems toyish, but I gotta tell you what, gentlemen, I am blown away at what I am seeing in diversity and quality of what I'm looking at. Guys, introduce yourselves and tell me what is it we're looking at here on this layout. My name is Glenn Holland. Uh, I'm a member of Penlug, which is the Pennsylvania Lego Users Group. Uh, this is our layout, and we're joined by the Texas Brick Railroad, uh, where we split into two halves. We have the yard, and they have the other half. What scale is this? It's uh, what we call L gauge. L gauge. Uh, it's, uh, well, I it's, guess the Lego own, gauge. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, Lego's own gauge they can't come up with. Does it look it, to me like it's O scale almost? It's not quite O scale. It's a little larger than true O scale gauge. Um, so our trains are somewhere in the 40, 146 scale range. I'm um, seeing steam engines. I'm seeing 844 UPs. I see the Greyhound Challenger, the Southern Pacific Daylight. Now tell me, are these gorgeous models, are these kits? None of the models you see are operating on our layout. None of the houses or anything like that is a kit. This is all scratch built this by us. This is all, oh my God, so, oh wow. This is this is so much more than what some of the HO guys do. We get to buy a kit and glue it together and paint it. Mm -hmm. You guys have to come up with the whole, yeah. I mean, how do you scratch build a steam locomotive? So we usually start by researching a prototype. So like when I built my Crusader, I would uh, go through the any drawings I could find. I talked to the Reading Historical Society and I was looking for any information that I could find on it. I'd scale the drawings down to the 146 uh, scale as mentioned and then so I went from there and just found the parts yeah. that were available kind of built up the frame at first and then made sure the motors were working properly and then got all the articulation with the trucks. Tell me the about the motors. The motors uh, are Lego's uh, homegrown motors. Okay. The, what I use is uh, a train motor that's kind of can come in a set and then they also have like the rope I guess it's more like the robotic stuff. It's called the yeah. Technic line. The, the Technic sets and the robotic sets have uh, uh, motors that we also adapt to uh, what we want to do. Usually comes to uh, what we want to get out of a locomotive as far as performance goes. So like a, a Y6B will use a much different setting than like a fast passenger locomotive. I even yeah. seen a Pensy T1 over there that articulated. You guys <laughs> really did the research to try to figure out how to make curved bricks and square bricks mm -hmm. turn into a train. Now, okay, I'm going to give you trouble on this next part, okay? <laughs> I understand that it is against your policy to glue anything together. Tell yeah. me about that. Is that across? <laughs> yep, see, there you go. <laughs> that is timing. Yep. So, My point is if you drop something, 
you're gonna break it. Exactly, but that's but the beauty of Lego. Yeah. Why don't you want to glue it together? Because it, putting it together the second and third time is just as fun. Also, so this is gonna be fun. It can yes. be. You're gonna be cussing my name. The other, all of these buildings, <laughs> all of these locomotives, all of these passenger trains, none of this is glued. None of them. No, no, no two bricks together and, on this layout are glued. And the other thing about gluing is a lot of our models are evolutionary. They're models built on previous models. We often go back as new parts come out, we redesign our models to make them better. We tear them apart. We, you know, as new techniques come about, as as we just become better builders in general, we'll take our old models apart. If recycle I the joined parts. your club and I glued my stuff together, would you guys throw me out? No, that's <laughs> your decision. Okay, so it is allowed. We won't. We, we respect people's uh, right to do what it's, they want. It's your model. Guys, you can do that. I mean, the forests, like, the, these Southern Pacific engines, these buildings. You got to glue this stuff together, guys. <laughs> Well, we just choose not to. Okay, I'm like done with well, that. It holds we, together we, surprisingly well. It does, and you know, we, we give each other enough yeah. enough crap as it is because, like, I built a streamlined K4, and he always yells at me that I built it in the wrong color. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, what website can they check out to look this up online? Uh, we're on Flickr. We're on. Uh, our company is BrickModelRailroader.com, and Penlug also has a website too. Yeah. It's Penlug.org. Yeah, Penlug.org. And then Texas Brick Railroad is TBRR.org. Uh, yes. Yep. Well, this blows me away. This is a whole new thing for me to get my brain around. <laughs> but these are every bit prototype modelers as we are. They've just got the handicap of using squares and circles. No <laughs> soldering iron, no glues, we consider no. consider it the Lego to be It's a, a challenge. I can see it being a challenge, and it's still part of the toy industry, and that's big business. So thank you very much, guys, for Absolutely. sharing this with us on What's Neat. Absolutely. Thank you. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing with beautiful Michelle here from the Colorado Railroad Museum, and that's a really nice railroad in Greeley, Colorado, where they have this museum to show off, I'm sure, a lot of narrow gauge, the history of Colorado, and I understand you all have a layout there, Michelle. Please tell us your full name, tell the What's Neat folks about your beautiful museum. Thank you. The Colorado Model Railroad Museum has a 5,500 square foot layout. It is HO scale but we operate it like the real world completely prototypically down to time. Oh, operate it. Yeah, and it's dispatched, fully dispatched. How many hours is a session? Um, well, we're open from 10 to 4. So we are like a museum for the public, but we operate like a model railroading session. So okay. we kind of blend the two together for That's the public. That's awesome. So you actually teach them how to operate. Now, what else do you have? A beautiful layout. What else do you guys show off there? Um, we have some great artifacts in model railroading, and we have a full-size Colorado and Southern caboose, and it's beautiful and fully restored. So you can go inside and check it out. It's really unusual that a museum is set up at the NMRA show. Are you finding benefit from being here? Absolutely. It's been interesting. People have heard of us, but not been. So maybe we're helping them come to Colorado and check us out. And some people have been and just been so excited to see us here. They're like, we've been. It's great. So Absolutely. This has been a great show for us. That's awesome. <laughs> and tell us, what website would you want to check out if we're out that way and we want to tour your beautiful place? Um, you want to check out www.cmrm.org. That's for Colorado Model Railroad Museum. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been watching the video of the layout and this gorgeous calendar here. Thank you guys guys are doing the right way to promote a business, so good for you, thank and you. thank you very much for sharing this gorgeous place with all of our viewers on What's Neat. You're very welcome. Thank you. I loved it. <laughs> I'm with one of my most favorite people in the industry, Doug Blaine of Bachman Trains. And I say that because Doug and I have worked for better than 22 years in this industry. We've both become sort of seasoned together and we've kind of helped each other along the way through that 22 year journey. But Doug is in charge of essentially sales, advertising for no, Bachman. Ju just marketing. Just marketing for and, Bachman. And uh, at Bachman, you're uh, in charge of uh, the marketing and licensing programs at, at Bachman. It's been a pleasure. It's been a great ride with you over the years as well. I appreciate that. Had a lot that. of fun. 
and uh, we've worked on a lot of great projects together. Yeah, some of the photographs, I'd love to B-roll some of the stuff I can think in my mind. Well, we actually took the Williams line and took it outside so it looked like the real, real grand passenger train running underneath that bridge in Illinois. That was a winner. We did the one steam engine, the large scale engine coming across the creek with all these gorgeous, that scene took every tree in my basement. There's been a lot of projects, a lot of great ones. And the first one I remember was the, the ON30 layout you did for when we first introduced the ON30 line with Lee Riley. Right. And um, it was just a beautiful, gorgeous scene on a trestle with uh, the fall trees, and it was uh, a thing of beauty. Oh my God, that turned into the very first five-part series in the model press on ON30, because I had to jump on every other model. Thank you for that, Scoop. It's been a pleasure. It's always been good working with you, because you guys manufacture so much product across a diverse market that really tailors the beginners, but you can't say that when you look at large scale and you see some of the museum quality models that you come out with. Well, we're always interested in getting people started in the hobby, whether it's in large scale or HO scale, any scale. But uh, we're standing here in front of our Thomas line. Oh, and, I love it, the colors. And that is just a great way to transition kids from you know, playing with wooden, wood, wooden trains, plastic trains, and get them into electric trains and graduate them on to become real model railroaders. Right. It's a, it's a great stepping stone for everyone in our hobby. Man, Doug Blaine, you are so respected and loved in this industry, and I want to do one thing, and that is this Christmas. Can we follow you guys when you do the White House Christmas tree train? Absolutely. We'll make sure uh, you get footage, or right, we'll get uh, publicity on it somehow, and make sure you're included. You're It'll awesome. It'll be a pleasure. You're the best. Doug Blaine from Bachman Industries, thank you so much. Thanks for visiting us, Ken, and thanks for a great show. Hi, I'm Joshua Barton with What's Need This Week, and I'm here with Denny Yelsma with Yelsma Graphics. How are you today, Denny? Great. I'm great. Good. It's great to be in Kansas City. Oh. Oh. Good. Uh, tell me a little bit about these wares here. Okay, well, we, what we've been doing is we've been making railroad jackets, railroad shirts, caps, uh, you name it, and we do nothing but embroidery, and everything is custom, and uh, this here is a Union Pacific Challenger. And uh, we do what I call the exotic railroad uh, jackets, where we have a, a locomotive and then the uh, uh, logo itself. And uh, we put them on uh, uh, jackets. We have different weight jackets. And uh, you name the uh, railroad we have. We right now have 1,205 different railroad logos. Now are these outsourced from China? Oh no, we personally make them. There's a little lady that runs my machine. She has for years and years, and we do everything. We do the designing, the digitizing, we do everything right here in the good old USA. I love to hear that, Denny. Well, these are absolutely beautiful pieces. So how much would something like this go? About three, four hundred dollars? No, these are these jackets start out at $89 or $79 up to, to $160, $70. And we also, we do clubs. So the club uh, members out there, if they want a, uh, a club, we'll make a special pricing for uh, clubs and we'll design theirs, uh, you know, club logos. Wow, that gives me a ton of ideas. I'll tell you, Ken. All right, well, thank you very much, Denny, for uh, talking with us, and we'll uh, be hearing from you soon. Do you have a website that people can uh, get to? Yes, very simple. It's yelsma.com. That's J-E-L-S-M-A.com. And we're based out of Jacksonville, Florida, and we've been doing this for 33 years. This is our 33rd year. Wow, that's great. Thank you, Denny, for uh, hanging out with me for a few minutes. All right. For this segment of What's Neat, we're in the Woodland Scenics booth with Diana Horman, and she's got a really cool product to talk about. Now, you'll remember Woodland Scenics as being the company that makes the scenery products that we all use on our model railroads pretty much, and the lighting system that we featured on a previous What's Neat video. Diana, did I get anybody in trouble when I said somebody needs a raise on that product? You didn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to get y'all's attention. Now I see you've come with a beautiful water system here at the show. Tell us about this. Yep. The water system over there 
Is that right? <laughs> the field system is here. So the water system is <laughs> over there. This is the field this system. The so field I'm supposed system. to be talking about the yes, field system. The field system. Tell us about the field system, and then we'll talk about the water that system. Good. Let's All right. do that. Okay. So the field system is brand new. It's coming out this fall. And the reason we did Woodland Scenics did this is because Woodland is always looking for the next big thing to come out with for right. modelers for realism. And we realized that we're missing tall grasses, things that you're going to see in a field, right. in a pasture, in a meadow. Right. So we needed tall grasses. We came up with a new material. It's called static grass. Okay. Static grass. And you're probably going to wonder, how do you make it stand up? Or what is it? Okay. How do you make it stand up? Well, we make it stand up with the static king. The static king static must be king. a new static grass gun, no? Yes, it is. So let me tell you about the static grass, and then we'll get to the static king. Okay. Static grass, as you can see in some of these pictures, has, let's do this one. There's four you different. You know, I love that feel. Run your fingers on yeah. that. Look at that. Yep. The price four is right. Four different colors. And that is different colors. Yes. Nice. Four different colors. Four different heights. Let's do this one. Four okay. different heights. Okay. You can see how they blend together. Yes, because there you know it is. what? Everything isn't a manicured golf course. No. So you need something that shows the field. That's so along the main line. That's what the static grass is gonna do. But to make it look like this, we're gonna have a static king. Basically, I'm gonna apply some glue. I'm gonna throw the static grass in the static king. I'm gonna turn it over, turn it on, and it causes it to stand upright when it applies. How about that? It's cool. Now, it's is really that a cool. new product that you've just announced? Yes, it and is. And do you have those at the show, or is that something we're gonna see in Train Fest? Um, you will see it at Train Fest. It'll okay. be, it should be available later this fall for purchase dealers. Everything, all the dioramas that you see here are the field grasses, the static grass, another new material called plant hues, another new one called briar patches. Pretty cool. Also, we have the model vac, which is going to help keep it clean because you know static grass can be a little messy. Other modeling can. This is designed to pick it up and then reuse it. That's awesome. It's cool. You guys are a family company, been around now for decades. Over 40 and years. I can tell your enthusiasm for the hobby. You love your job, don't you? I do like my job. I do. It's a great place to work. It's the best hobby in the world, Diana. Thank you so much for sharing the Woodland Scenics products with us on, on What's Neat. I'm here now with Ken uh, Patterson. We're doing an on the spot interview. We're working. We're working. There's, yeah, there's your sound. I know. Here's your sound bars right there. We're getting an on the spot interview. Got to do it like this. There you go. <laughs> I'm Campbell Rice, and I'm here with uh, Rob with um, uh, Z-Track, their distributor for AZL, and uh, not a lot out there about Z-Scale. So, tell me a little bit about your company here and, and what you have. Sure thing. Uh, Z-Track actually started out as a magazine, the only print magazine for Z-Scale model railroading. We moved into wholesale distribution and represent companies like American Z Line and Roka Hontrack products out of Japan, as well as sorted uh, smaller manufacturers. Um, it's really been great. Z Skills a growing segment of the hobby. We're getting a lot of new modern rolling stock, locomotive offerings, mm -hmm. uh, just really hitting a niche in the market. You it, know, it's amazing to me how how much the detail has uh, come along on Z Scale recently and. Uh, I have recently acquired a, a small Z-scale layout, so it's kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing because it's one of the you know, few scales in a small space. You can model your favorite short line, scene, area to scale, and you know, do that in a very small space. It's awesome. Really like uh, all the products that you guys have, and and I uh, hope the show was good for you. It was a good show. I mean, uh, we look forward to offering more products and uh, entertain the uh, model railroad community more. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, for this segment of What's Neat, we're standing in front of a T-Track N-Scale layout, and these guys are modular, and they've set a new world's record for how many modules are set up at a show. 330 today. So I'm talking to Bruce Arbor here and Vic McTee, and these are both members of this T group. In fact, you're involved in the website page and a lot of social media for the group. Yes, Tell me about the whole layout here. Well, as the he concept. Says it, yeah, Where did you it, guys come up with this? Oh, well, it came up from Lee Monaco Fitzgerald, in tracker from way back, uh, actually, wife of Jim Fitzgerald. Uh, they went to Japan and saw a concept where they saw where they were doing some dioramas on poster boards. 
or, or art boards. Real small. Small, yeah, A4 paper size. And that's size. the key to the scale, is each one of your modules are almost comparable to the size of a painting. So literally, you guys have got 12 by 5s, 8 by 10s, you've got some that are three feet long, and they've all got leg levelers on. Tell us about the standards on that. Well, the standard's based on a single, what they call a single, and it's a metric, because it originated in Japan. But as you can see, people have expanded on that. You can do a double, you can do a triple, you can do a quad, but it's still all based on the measurements of that single. And as you said, the, the leveling bolts are, uh, are necessary to be able to level the uh, module from 2.75 inches up to four inches. Nice. Uh, that way they can run wires underneath if they have to, or account for tables that aren't quite perfect. That type of thing. Now the track is also a standard on this. What kind of track do you use? Well, Kato Unitrack, I guess, originating in Japan, was the proprietary track. Okay. So the standard as it's developed in the U.S. is that you just need Kato Unitrack at the ends because those are both the positive and electrical joins to the module right next to this. So are there guys that mix other track in the middle? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And tell me about how many members have you got here set up at this show? How many guests would you got? Well, we got 60 actual participants bringing 330 modules. Mm -hmm. and 60 the, people, that's yeah. a lot. Well, not including their spouses and, yeah, yeah, and their yeah. buddies, uh, but we've got people all the way from Ottawa, Canada, uh, Texas, Vic, Texas, Texas. Yep. Uh, we're down from coastal Alabama, of course, Pets, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, lots here in uh, Missouri, Iowa, uh, all over, Oklahoma. This well. is amazing. Yep. It's small, it's simple. A beginner could build one of these and yeah, set absolutely. it up with you guys yeah. and learn so quickly. It's got to be the best hobby in the world. Tell me about the camaraderie and the fellowship. Oh, it's there. It's, I mean, it's great. You get it at eye level. Kids, you know, love it. So, you joke around with the kids, and I mean everybody does that so, same sort of thing, right? There, so there's a lot of camaraderie there. Uh, same with just getting together from all parts of the world and working out the same problems. Guys, this yeah. is awesome. Big selling himself short. Uh, his group in Texas actually does a junior engineer program at all their shows with a smaller T-track layout where they live. You know, a lot of these people, kids, stay away, don't touch. No, 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 no. We invite you. That's Come amazing. On. That is so the opposite of so many modular clubs where they put up the big ropes and say stand back. You guys, in, 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 you want people to get touch and feel and be part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You All need right, to go down and see. You need to go see Fei Chin's layout out of here if you want to get a good idea of the touch. See what it's all about. Try this. See what this does. Which so. modules are hers? Fate, yeah. Actually, Fei Chin. The gentleman. Yeah. yeah. He's over here. Um, just so about 20 I'll run B-roll footage of these as, there you, you go. as you talk. What are these modules that we're looking at? Faye's got his own separate uh, situation, his own inner loop running off the main branch, but he's got a lot of proactive buttons that you can push that operate this and that. Oh, so animation. the kids get to touch it. Uh, the vascule bridges go up and down. A dump truck dumps its load, that type of thing. And in, uh, literally inviting, please touch, please touch. You know, that type this is exciting. This is doable. This is attainable. This is the beauty of this hobby. And you're doing it in N scale, guys. Thank you very much for both of you for sharing this with us and the viewers of What's Neat. Ken, it's a pleasure. It's Thank you so been much. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm standing here with Craig Martin, and Craig Martin is one of our favorite manufacturers. When you had BLMA models, Craig, you were young, you were astute, aggressive, and you showed a lot of the older folks in the room how to run a model building company. But now you're kind of retired for that since selling your company to Atlas, Correct. but you're still at the show today fulfilling your contract. Tell me how have you been and tell me about your business card deal. Tell me, tell us where you've been all okay, this time. Okay, so yeah, very quickly, I, and I appreciate all that, man. I've, I've been I love good. you, man. I've been good. It's good to see you. Um, what have I been doing? So I have the other metal business card business. So very those. busy with that. Uh, just And it's funny because people ask me, do I miss the model train business? I do because I miss tinkering with stuff, but I get my fulfill of that from, yeah, here's one of the metal business cards. Yeah. From uh, 
from this business, right? Because this is manufacturing, it's all the stuff that kind of went into model trains in a different field. A bigger market, different market, a much different business. Different model. Than model everything. trains, but. Uh, but I know you've got a passion for trains. You always have. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, you're probably not getting as much time to model now running this business, because no. it's busy. But tell us, how do you fulfill your passion for trains? So we've been out here at Santa Fe Junction here, three days in a row, I mean, mm -hmm. it's epic. So off-roading in the desert, watching trains. Whenever I off-road, it's always next to a train track. So you're my, still a rail fan. Oh, I love, yeah. yeah. That's how I get my fulfillment. And I have my friends back home that have layouts. Um, and I, I run trains and have fun and, and work on the business and uh, enjoy time with my wife and my dog and try to keep it simple. You know? Now that's awesome. And you're still so young. I would want to ask one more question. Sure. Have you ever considered possibly getting back into the model railroad industry as a manufacturer? Have you thought of other ideas? It's a good question. I, I can't due to my contract for a while, but I, I really, um, I sit on the sidelines and I really appreciate what some companies are doing to innovate stuff. I think if I was to ever do it, it would be an innovative type something or other that, that changes the game in some way, but I haven't quite thought about it, but I'll be honest, I enjoy watching your videos, I enjoy seeing all my friends here and just having fun in this industry from from this side of it right <laughs> that's why we love you craig hey, man. man you're the best you. thank Good you very you, much for a few it. minutes guys hey appreciate it All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado, or order online at mycaboose.com. Thank you.